speaker is Mr. Mal King, who most recently was a state representative. And Mr. King, I know you weren't here at the beginning. And we have five minutes, and I will warn you at the end of four minutes and 45 seconds. Thank you, and welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> For some 30 years, I have been on the firing line. Worked on the street corners, worked in public education, directed a community agency dealing with uh, problems, people of color. Currently, I'm a member of the faculty at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where I teach in the Department of Urban Studies and Planning. Was a state rep for 10 years. And through this period and process, I have become aware the kinds of things that need to be done in order to improve on the quality of life <coughs> for all people in this city. People talk a lot about the issue of crime and people who are responsible Thugs, hoodlums, unquestionably have to be dealt with. But I'm here to tell you that I'm about the kind of prevention that says that I would rather have stopped that crime before it started, because you know when you call the police, it's because it's too late. I worked on a street corner for 15 years, and I know what to do in order to change our young people who've been about self-destruction and community destruction so that they become more positive people and that they work for their own self-development. We'll put people out there on the streets, working with them on a 24-hour-a-day basis. And I will tell you that in a three to four year period, we will guarantee the kind of difference in the climate on the streets, but more importantly, in the behavior of youth so that the problems of crime will not be with us. Housing, everybody says they have an answer, exists not just in Boston, but around this country. When you talk about employment, I think it's important that we understand that some of it can be handled here in the city of Boston. And in 1979, when we campaigned for mayor, we campaigned on a Boston Jobs for Boston People program. And that program meant that 50% of the jobs that are being <coughs> developed in Boston would go to Boston residents. People in East Boston where their unemployment rate is 18.9%, in Charlestown where it's 21%, in South Boston and Roxbury where it's 20%, and as it's high across the city, need to know that they can get employment and that 85% of the jobs that are going on in Boston are being held by people who don't live in this city. I want a program that allows Boston people across the city to share in Boston, share in its future, share in its employment opportunities. And a major part of that will be to take the Occupational Resource Center and to make it into the full-time training program so that people in Boston who are unskilled and people who need training will be able to get some so that they can take advantage of the new technology, whether it's in the computer industry or in the new healthcare industry jobs. I think those are the gut programs, the programs that put resources in people's uh, pockets that are gonna make a difference to the lives of people here in the city. Thank you, okay.
Are there parts of this city in which you feel uncomfortable or have felt uncomfortable in going uh, during the course of this campaign? There isn't a part of the city that I have not gone into, and there isn't a part of the city that I feel uncomfortable going into. I'm uh, going to be the mayor of the whole city, and I reach out to people everywhere, including people who disagree with a number of my positions. It is the only way that we're going to be able to bring the city together. You have to reach out and talk to people where you have some differences. You find out where there are some commonalities with respect to those differences, and then you begin to move on. For example, there are people in South Boston who are as concerned as people in the South End or Jamaica Plain, for example, with the issue of Boston jobs for Boston people. And you bring people together around that because it's in both groups' interest to make sure that we get our fair share of those jobs. So you make your case to the, the people in South Boston, let's say, on the basis of economics. Well, you make the case on the basis of economics. You make it on the basis of the need for improving the schools. You make it on the basis of the need for this to be an open city for everybody. So it's not just economics. It's the total uh, city, and it's the total needs of all the people in the city that you make the case on. After the primary, if you were to find yourself facing either David Finnegan or Ray Flynn uh, in a runoff, how would you see to it that that campaign didn't appeal to some of the worst instincts that we've seen revealed in, in Boston politics over the years? How would you keep that from becoming a racial campaign? I don't think the onus is, on a, is going to be on Mel King uh, to make that, uh, to make sure that it is not a campaign that is uh, fraught with uh, problems of racial divisiveness. I think if you look very clearly at the way I have been campaigning whenever I've been running for public office, I think you'll see that I've always focused on the issues. I've always worked with the broadest cross-section of people. I call our campaign the Rainbow Campaign because we have all kinds of people, all colors, all ages, from all parts of the city involved in the campaign. At Faneuil Hall that night, if you looked out, you could see there was a phenomenal difference in who was carrying the signs for the campaign for Mel King and the campaign for the other candidates. We had people, like I said, of all colors, all descriptions, all ages, uh, different sexual preference, you name it, we can claim it with respect to who's in the campaign. So with that as a base, I don't have any problem at all because that's what we're going to focus on, those things that have brought us together, that have moved us from where we were four years ago to the place where we're going to be able to win this election in 1983. You took a stand about a month or so ago uh, on the occasion of the first debate in which you refused to appear because the two of the other uh, candidates were not invited. Some people believed that that hurt you. Others said that it helped you because you got more attention. Uh, do you have any regrets about that? Would you do anything differently? No regrets at all. I wouldn't do anything differently. I'm convinced that the approach that we all need to take is one in which we say that we can mix politics with principles. And as long as we're talking about the politics of inclusion, I mean, talking about a city where we're saying we want total access for everybody across the city. And then for people to sit in a forum that says that some people aren't going to be welcome, I think that's uh, being very hypocritical. And I don't think saying something about it after having taken advantage of it uh, answers the question. It seems to me that if all of the candidates who were preaching and espousing uh, total access in the city were to have taken the appropriate stand, then all of the people who legitimately, uh, who are legitimate candidates, would have been able to have participated in that forum. You did very well in the in the previous race, so this is a somewhat hypothetical question. But I wonder if you knew going into this race that you wouldn't be successful, would you run anyway? Would it be worth it for the opportunity to let your ideas be heard? I've got a lot of forums for my ideas to be heard. I've just published a book a couple of years ago. I think people get a chance to deal with that. I've 
work at MIT where I instruct a lot of people who are into community economic development, run a program where you have a chance to get your ideas across to a good cross-section of people. I'm running for mayor of Boston because I know that I can win. I know that we can affect the kind of positive changes in this city and that we can bring people together in a way that will uh, impact on them very, very positively. Uh, if I didn't believe that I could win in Boston, I would not be wasting my time. I would not be wasting a lot of wonderful people, time and energy, and the money that people have been contributing.